So this is 8.1 part 2. We're going to look at series and summation notation. So when the terms of a sequence are added together, the resulting expression is a series. A series can be finite or infinite. So finite just means that it ends, infinite goes on forever. So a finite series would look like this, where we have like a starting and a stopping point, and we just add everything together. And an infinite series would have this dot, dot, dot. So that just means it keeps on going. We use the summation notation to write a series. For example, the two series above can be written in the summation notation as follows. So our summation notation is this little, it's called a sigma, but it's that little symbol, like the E shape. When we do that, so when we write our summation notation, on the bottom, is our starting point, so we always have like i is equal to 1, or whatever number we start at. And then on the top is our ending point, so that's why here we have 4, because in this one we have 4 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. So our ending point is the fourth term. So this is our start, and this is our end. And then we would just write our equation here. When it has no end, we would put infinity up at the top because it keeps on going forever. So this is pretty much the same thing we did on Friday. We're going to be coming up with some equations again to be our rule for our series. But we have to put this little sigma in front of it because we're going to be adding all of our numbers together. It's not just like a comma separated list which is what we did on Friday. So it's just a little bit different. So write each series using summation notation. So first thing we want to do is figure out what our equation is going to be. So this is our first term, this is our second term, this is our third. We don't know what term 250 is, but we do have an ending point, so this is not an infinite problem. What is the relationship between the term and each number here. So like, what do we have to do to one to get to 25? Plus 25. What's one plus 25? 25, oh, 26. Yeah, so what are we doing to one to get to 25? Adding 20, plus five, 26. Oh, adding 24. Let's say if we're adding 24, do we do the same thing here to get to 50? Is 2 plus 24 50? You multiply by 25. We multiply by 25. So for summation notation, we use i instead of n, but it's the same thing. So it would just be i times 25, or 25 i. So if you see here, 1 times 25 is 25, 2 times 25 is 50, 3 times 25 is 75. What times 25 would give you 250? 10. So this is our 10th term. So we draw our little sigma there. We start at, uh, we start at 1, so i is equal to 1 is our starting. And what term do we end at? 10. So 10 goes on the top. And this would be our answer. Alright, so B. We have term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. And then we see a dot, 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 so we know this is going to go on to infinity. So I can draw my summation, and I know infinity is going to go on the top, because I have that dot, dot, dot there. I'm going to start at 1, so i is equal to 1. Do you always put that i is equal to 1 at the bottom? Yes. Okay. All right. So looking at our terms here that it gives us, whenever it's a fraction, it always helps just to take it like the top and then the bottom. Take it one step at a time. So let's just look at the top numbers of our fractions here. So what are we doing to go from 1 to 1? Are we doing anything? 
No. No. So what do you think is going to go on the top down here? Nothing. Well, we can't put nothing. Oh, one? Because you're multiplying by one? Well, if it was one, then that means our top of our fraction is going to be one every single time. Huh. But what do we put? What variable are we using here? I. I. So we put I. Because when I is equal to 1, we're going to have 1 on top. When I is equal to 2 for our second term, we're going to have 2 on top. When I is 3, we'll have 3 on top. So we have to just put I on top. So we're done with the top. Let's look at the bottom. What do we do to go from 1 to 2? Add 1. Add 1. Let's see if that works for all of them. To go from 2 to 3. You add 1. Add 1. That works. 3 to 4. You add 1. Add 1. Perfect. It works. So it works for all of them. So we're adding 1. So we take our term and add 1. What variable are we using for our term? What variable do we use? I. I. So I plus 1 is our denominator. And then that's it. This is our answer. Any questions here? All right, let's look at nine. So we see we have a starting and an ending number. So our sigma is going to have i is equal to 1 at the bottom, and we're going to have some number at the top, but we don't know which term that 100 is. But let's figure out what our equation is. We have 1, 2, 3. What do you have to do to 1 to get to 5? Add 4. Add 4. Let's see if that's true. If we add 4 to 2, do we get 10? No. No. So can't add 4. What else can we do to get from 1 to 5? Multiply by 5. Multiply, Multiply by, five. by 5. Does that work for 2? It's 2 times 5, yes. 10? Yeah. And 3? Yeah. Awesome. So how would we write that as an equation here? I, um, 5. 5 times I. Perfect. So what would our number here have to be to multiply times 5 to get 100? 20. Yeah, perfect. 20. So this is our 20th term, and that's where we end. So up top, we would put 20. And that's our series. Can we do 10? Yeah, we'll do all of them. All right. So we have our sigma here, i is equal to 1. Let's figure out our equation. So we're just going to work with the tops first. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Just looking at the tops, what do we do to get from 1 to 1? Uh, nothing. Nothing. So let's look at 2. What do we get to go from 2 to 4? Multiply by 2. But if we multiply 3 by 2, do we get 9? No. No. You square it. You square it. So we take our term and square it. So how would we write that in our equation here? I, I, squared. I squared. You squared. So you take your term and you square it. Perfect. Now let's look at the bottoms. So... We can look at our terms here. We have 1, and we get 2, 2, we get 5, 3, we get 10. There's not a lot of a, not much of a pattern going on between each one of these. But what do you notice about the top here and the bottom? What do you notice about the numerator and the denominator of these fractions? You add 1. Awesome. The denominator is one more. So how would we write that in our equation here? I squared plus 1. I squared plus 1. Perfect. And then the last thing we need is something up top here of our summation. So what would we put up top? Infinity. Infinity. It has that little dot, 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 so it keeps going on forever. Good job, guys. So let's look at number 11. So we have our first term, second, third, fourth. 
So does anybody notice a pattern going on here? Multiply by six. six. But remember what we said on Friday, if it gets really big really, really quick, there's going to be some type of exponents involved. So how would we put that into an equation? What would we put here? Because that's right, we do multiply by six each time to get to the next. But how can we relate 1 to 6 and 2 to 36 and 3 to 216? 6 squared. Oh, wait, no. Where would we put the i? On the bottom. The i will be the exponent. The i is the exponent. So it would be 6 to the, the power of i. Because 6 to the power of 1 is 6. 6 to the power of 2 is 36. 6 to the power of 3 is 216. 6 to the power of 4 is 1296. Awesome. Good job, Chris. I is the exponent. And then what goes on top of our sigma here? Infinity. Infinity. We have another dot, 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 so it goes on forever. All right, so we have 1, 2, 3... And then we need to figure out which one this one is. So what do we get? What do we do to get from one to five? Add four. Add four. Yeah. Let's try adding four. If we add four to two, do we get six? Yeah. If we add two to three, do we get seven? If we add four to three, do we get seven? Yeah. Yep. Yes. So we add four. So how do we write that as our equation here? Add this to four. I plus 4. Perfect. And then here we have I is equal to 1. And then we need to figure out what's our last term here. What number would we put up here to add 4 and get 12? 8. eight. So this is our 8th term. So 8 goes on the top because that's where we end. Alright, so next we're actually going to be finding the sum of our series. So here is what number we plug in to start, and this is the last number we plug in to end, and we add everything we get together. So we're going to add everything in between. So we start with 4, then we're going to add, we're going to plug in 5, we're going to plug in 6, and we're going to plug in 7, and then we're going to plug in 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers that we have to plug in. So let's start by plugging in 4. So we have 3 plus 4 squared. What's 4 squared? And 16 plus 3? 16. 19. Next, let's plug in 5. So 3 plus 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 3? 28. Then we plug in 6. 3 plus 6 squared. 39. Oh, nine. Eight, six, yeah. Perfect. And then we plug in seven. Three plus seven squared. Forty-nine. Seven squared is forty-nine plus three. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. And then we have to plug in eight. Three plus eight squared. Uh, Eight squared is 64, 64 plus 3 is 67. So once we find all of these values, summation means that we're adding them, so we just add all of these numbers together, which we can do in the calculator. Awesome. 205. So that's our answer. So again, for these questions, I need to see all of your work, just like the ones in the beginning where you just had to plug things in. I need to see all your work. Let's look at 13. So we're going to start by plugging in 1, and we end by plugging in 5. What numbers do we have between 1 and 5? What comes after 1? 
two, three, and four. So let's start by plugging in one. We have eight times one, which is eight. Then we have eight times two, which is 16. Eight times three, what's eight times three? 24. 24. Eight times four, Thirty-two. Eight times five. Forty. And we stop there. Just be careful that you stop at the number at the top. Don't keep going. I know it's fun to just plug numbers in. Don't keep going. So we just add all of these up. So eight plus sixteen plus twenty-four plus thirty-two. Plus we get one twenty. What numbers do we have between 3 and 7? 4, 5, and 6. We're going to plug in 4, 5, and 6. 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So let's start with 3. We have 3 squared minus 1. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Next we plug in 4. So 4 squared minus 1. What's 4 squared? And 16 minus 1? 15. Next we plug in 5. So 5 squared. Perfect. 24. And then 6. So 6 squared minus 1 would be what? 35. And then we plug in 7. So 7 squared minus 1? 48. So we plug all these into our calculator, add them all up. One thirty.